Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna unbox the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus, which I ordered from Samsung shop online. So we get this cardboard box inside there, we have a few papers, we have the invoice and the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus's box, which is actually kind of like a chocolate box though. It, it doesn't have a charger, so that's why it is like that. But the best part is that I don't know how to open this because I've never bought a Galaxy Tab before. So it's gonna take quite a few seconds to find how, how to open it. A few seconds later, I found the way. It's kind of like the chocolate box actually. And we have the Galaxy Tab on top of everything else. Yeah, definitely, why not? Uh, but I'm gonna unlock my phone just to see if it does connect to it automatically to do the setup or like the Apple devices does or not. So I'm gonna keep this tab aside and we have to look at only the cable because there's no charge as i said and that's the sad reality of today's modern devices from at least the bigger brands like samsung apple or google but i think apple still provides a charger in the box at least for the ipads genuinely great now inside the box there is we have nothing literally uh, we have a few documentations and the sim ejector and this is going to come with every single galaxy tab a9 plus even though this is the 5G variant of the device which will support a normal SIM card as well as an eSIM card if you have one. But it also is needed because it does support microSD card support which uses the microSD XC cards dedicated slot. And that's actually genuinely helpful because a lot of people has the 4GB, 64GB model. Definitely budget thing. But I don't think that variant is good because most of the time you're going to get the 128GB, 8GB variant for this almost the same price. I'm like, the difference is very little. And, and this, this whatever the wrapper is, it's made out of paper, I think. It's, it's different, though. I like it. Let me show you some things. This Galaxy Tab is in silver because I just love silver color variants of the tabs. And it has a Samsung branding and it's pretty much clean and clear. But there is a small little tiny dark spot at the back, which does showcase that this is a budget tablet and Samsung has quality controls problems in this kind of department. Now, it does showcase that it does have four speakers, which... Is true, but the point is that it didn't didn't sound as good. But they're loud though. But that's something that I'm gonna keep for the review, not for today. And we can also see on the right side we have the buttons, like the power button and the volume buttons, which is a little bit different of a configuration compared to what we I'm at least used to on the iPads. I have to get accustomed to it. So here we have the logo of the Galaxy Samsung Galaxy thing, and I have to put the SIM card in once I get to the welcome screen. And I have to find where to put the SIM card in because I just don't really know at all anything about this device. So this is totally unknown device to me. And this is the SIM card tray. It looks like for the 5G variant, for the non-5G variant, there would be blockage at the place of the SIM card, but that's a different thing, whatever. I put the SIM card in and I immediately got 5G network in it and it started working like champ. By the way, the quality of the display, as much as I thought that it would be a TFT display, so it's just too bad, it doesn't actually. It doesn't look like it. So even though it still is a 1200p panel with about 206 ppi density, which is not that high, but it's an 11-inch panel and it's a 90 hertz panel. It does look really good, but considering the price. Otherwise, if you look at it from the sides and other things, it doesn't look as good. So it's going to take quite a few minutes to just set things up. And what I found out is that even though it does connect to Samsung, but it's not like because it's sitting right beside it, it is connected. It's just you have to manually do it to just scan it, blah, blah, blah. Which I'm not complaining at all. It's it's still very much fine, but uh, it did actually cut the process and it didn't work for me. So I have to manually do everything, which is annoying to me. So I'm going to skip all of that for you. And Samsung also wants me to install certain app, to install certain more apps. And I skipped that totally because I just don't want that. It's a budget thing, so Samsung does that. It's a bit confusing to me, but at the end of the day, I went into the home screen and I clicked on the settings. And it does show lags though, I'm just going to say it. But by the time I'm recording this, I've used this for about a day or so. So in that department, I'm just going to say you at this point, even though you will see lags in this video. That this device when it started it didn't have heating issues at all though it didn't warm up it didn't do anything wrong like that but the chip actually struggled uh mostly because 
it's not that powerful for a tablet with one UI in it because one UI has tons of features, tons of multitasking capabilities. It's not that powerful for that. But it's a fine thing if you use like two or three applications. And because it's the first time it's using its own processor, uh, yeah, surely it's going to see certain things like that. But okay, fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. But it's actually running one UI 6.1 software out of the box, which is really great. I've not used one UI 6 on my Samsung because I just don't really want to upgrade my devices. And this one though is at one UI 6.1 and it will launch with the Android 13 or the one UI 5 operating system. So it got already one update. Maybe it will get two more updates. But I'm checking out the device here and there to see what we have. I can see the Galaxy DX is here, which is really interesting because if you're using One UI Home as a stock launcher, then Galaxy DX is pretty much a cool experience in terms of how you interact with the application in pop-up view. It's kind of like a computer, but it's not. So it's fun experience, definitely for sure. And I also made a call to myself on my other phone from this one. And uh, it clearly shows that, yeah, it can do calls just like a normal Galaxy phone. It kind of feels like it's a Galaxy phone, actually. It's just a bigger size. Everything, every single thing, whether you talk about the Play Store or whether they talk about the Galaxy Store, anything you do, it kind of feels like a bigger phone. The last thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to update and at the same time, I'm going to do a speed test and that's probably going to show you what kind of speed you can expect from a Galaxy Tab A9 Plus if you're on 5G. By the time I was doing it, it was giving me somewhere like 200 to 350 or so, but it can provide really good speeds too. I have seen 500 on it too. As well as you can see, a very good and stable upload speed as well. But what's the purpose of buying this tablet though? Uh, you might ask. Because I own a M1 iPad Pro, this is not my primary tablet and I'm not going to use it for most things. So my review is going to be a little bit different, but I'm mostly using it as a like a internet provider. So it's going to provide me unlimited 5G network to my whole home. I'm going to use the mobile hotspot as well as I'm going to connect it to my router to provide internet to my whole home. That's what its main job is. But the secondary job is actually sometimes when I'm not doing anything, I'm probably using the M1 iPad Pro for other things, then I'm probably going to use it as an entertainment tablet. And tell me in the comments, have you bought the Galaxy S9 Plus and you're watching the video or you're thinking of buying it? And yes, if you feel like you need some really cool wallpapers for your devices, whether it's a tablet or a smartphone or even a laptop, well, I have some crazy cool 8K wallpapers, stunning designs and amazing colors. Visit my website, joindavid.com, link down below. And until the next one, bye and take care.